About two months ago, we put out a YouTube video for single stage, two stage, and variable capacity, and it blew up. So we've compiled a list of questions that you guys have asked, and we're gonna answer them right now. First question, this comes from Matt Freeman. He says, the savings of a variable capacity system does not make up for the double cost difference where I live. Uh, variable stage systems here in California cost you know 20k plus. Um, it's a thousand dollar difference in upfront cost versus a single stage system. Uh, when the system breaks down, uh, the parts needed to replace uh, for a variable stage system will wipe out any savings in electric you gain. Uh, not worth it. Uh, get the high, get the highest efficiency one or two stage systems, 15 to 17 here. Uh, so two. Um, I kind of agree with Matt. The summary of what Matt is is saying is basically the the cost for the variable capacity system um, in correlation to where he lives and the savings that he could get doesn't make sense to him. It depends on your area and depends on the cost. If the only reason you're buying a variable capacity system is based off of the savings, don't do it. Because variable capacity systems, yes, they save money, but a lot of the, the benefit of them comes in the form of comfort. And so at the end of the day, the, the savings is like, it's icing on the cake. It, it's going to definitely help pay for that system, but it's it's never you're never going to comp the cost of it. Now, over time, it you know depending on how much your your utility bills cost in the area that you live, then a variable capacity system may make more sense because it, it will help in in savings. If utility bills are high and, and usage is is very expensive, then then a variable capacity system might make more sense to you. And so I would, I would always, I kind of agree with Matt, like, you know, depending on, if you're only buying a system for a variable capacity system, like, and it, you're only doing it for the savings, um, then I wouldn't recommend it. There's so much more to a variable capacity system than just the savings. If that's your deciding factor uh, in, in price and in savings, is it, and that's it, then I would I would recommend what he recommended, which is a one or two state system. Um, uh, 15 to 17 tier is a great option. And so, um, yeah. This next comment is from Meow Bark. Um, it says, I find this very informative. Thank you, appreciate it. Um, in honesty, I wanna install a variable capacity system. If I have enough money to pay for an expensive repair down the road due to fancy module technology, but over time, AC do not last forever. Uh, like max life is 20 years. Uh, things get expensive every year on top, short supply and inflation. And in my opinion, maintenance is key. Uh, you might as well as put solar panels on the home. So I'm going to break down this comment. So summary is um, uh, Meow Bark would like to buy a variable capacity system uh, for the house if they have enough funds for it. Um, and it, they talked about expensive repairs down the road, which is which can be true. Um, and so if a system is not maintained, a variable capacity system has fancier technology has control boards. Um, there's more to them than just a single state system. And so there are um, costly, there can be costly, costly repairs down the road. However, um, within that 10 year, so uh, most systems, almost all systems, especially variable, you know, that have variable capacity, uh, they have a 10 year parts warranty. And so the only thing that you'd have to pay for is technically labor within that 10 year span. And so, and then uh, we provide a, an extended labor warranty uh, as well as a lot of other companies do. And so you could, you could get a 10 year labor warranty and a 10 year parts warranty. So for the next 10 years, you wouldn't have to worry about repairs or parts uh, on that system. Uh, and that's true for whether or not it was a single stage or, or two stage. Um, you can have those, you can have that covered for the next 10 years. And so now past that 10 year mark, um, labor and parts can get expensive. And maintenance, like you said earlier, is going to help make sure that that system is running as efficient as possible, which is one of the reasons why taking care of maintenance, you know, as the system ages, um, we can help prevent a lot of those problems from happening. And if you take care of a lot of those issues with Within that 10-year time frame, then the likelihood of that that same part failing again um, it won't be nearly as high um, if you never took care of that part in the first place. And so, uh, doing that preventive maintenance and and maintaining the system is super important. And so, yeah, great question. This next question comes from Reagan's Heating and Air. Phoenix, Arizona will destroy any air conditioner. You can put the most expensive thing out here. It'll break every four to six years. Uh, nothing can contend with our heat. I've been doing this 12 years and I've yet to see a unit live out a 10 year warranty with zero repairs. It looks like he lives in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, so we're based out of Oklahoma City. I've been to Phoenix. It is very hot. We do have some colleagues out there that work in the Phoenix area. And I do know that 
systems within hotter and harsher climates um, don't last nearly as long. Um, and a lot of that is contingent on you know how, how low do you set your thermostat, how well is that system maintained and taken care of um, within that time frame. Um, you know, how well was the system installed? Um, and so making sure that the system was installed correctly and satisfying uh, your state, local, and man- manufacturer uh, requirements. I mean, in Oklahoma, we, we do have to provide preventative maintenance on air conditioning systems as well within that time frame. And so it does happen. Um, and so making sure that, that you're taking care of those repairs early within that warranty period is super important. Um, and so, but that's super interesting that, you know, you know, break every four to six years. And I go back to a statement that I've said before, which is it's going to make sense to keep or it's going to make sense to replace. That can be, you know, how how expensive is it to repair that system, you know, versus how, how expensive is it to replace the system. And so, and you have to weigh what's most important to you. What, where do you want to allocate your funds? Do you want to spend money on repairing that, that system that, you know, may break down again soon? Or do you want to spend money towards a new system that has a, a warranty? And, and at that point, you could, like I said earlier, you can buy a 10-year labor warranty and a 10-year parts warranty. And so you can, a lot of times you can have those repairs taken care of um, as long as it's maintained well. So, this next question comes from user CV2VV20Z6N. You will see zero cost savings or comfort with a poorly sized system with inadequate ductwork. Variable system compared to a proper t- two stage system. I've had both in several homes the last 30 years. Both sized properly, and the difference with cost and comfort with the variable uh, was minimal compared to the two stage. I had to replace a variable furnace motor in one, and yikes on the cost. Uh, this is about 12 years ago, and cost of variable may have come down comparatively. Of course, manufacturers are moving away from two-stage because they are upselling the profit margins um, if it is happening uh, it is happening with, with everything. Basically, he, you know, it seems like he, he's owned variable capacity system before, and this is kind of his anecdotal experience over his over having a variable capacity system. He talked about making sure that the system sized correctly within the home, and then that is super important to make sure that it's one, sized correctly for the house, it's sized correctly for the comfort preference as well. Um, and I, I like variable capacity systems for that reason. It makes sizing just a little bit easier because during that day, you don't need it to run at full, full speed. It'll ramp up depending on demand. And so a variable capacity system is nice in that way is that it, it does it will adjust to your comfort preference a lot better than a single stage system would. As far as savings um, and whatnot, a lot of it depends on where you live, where you set your thermostat, you know, how well was that system maintained. Um, and then I'm going to add to this comment as well, you know, something that we're, we're finding out as well on so variable capacity systems, we are having to um, correct ductwork. We are having to correct airflow issues within the house. And variable capacity systems are a little bit more finicky than single stage systems when it comes to ductwork. Um, and so the components, they require a little bit more um, uh, care whenever it comes to making sure that the, the ductwork is sized correctly. Uh, and so... I will say with a variable capacity system versus a two stage system, whenever it's sized correctly, a possibility for the variable the the variable speed motor going out um, could be indicative of maybe the the ductwork's not sized properly for that system. There's it's kind of hard to tell um, with the information that was provided, but. Um, yeah, it, it, but that is also true. So he he mentioned at the very end. So of course, manufacturer moving away from two stage. That is true. Um, I've I've seen that in with within our own business is that the two stage equipment is almost the same price as the variable capacity in our experience. So in that sense, if you're comparing a two-stage versus a variable capacity system, I'd go with variable. Um, And so uh, if the price is the same, do that. But yeah, a great comment. Hey guys, we're about halfway through um, uh, these questions and I'm really enjoying answering them so far. Um, And what's fun is this is the first time that I'm reading these questions. So you're getting it live. It's great. Uh, And so, um, but I uh, wanted a quick plug. If you're in the Oklahoma City area, um, one, we appreciate you making it halfway through this video. Um, But we want to say if you're in in need of HVAC services uh, within the Oklahoma City Metro, we'd love to be your team. Uh, And if you're looking for an estimate on a new system, uh, we have a, a... instant estimate on our website where you could get a, a full system quote. If you want to have quick access to that, there's a QR code over on this side somewhere over here and you can scan that and get an instant instant estimate. Anyways, back to questions. So Kevin Stroop says the price difference between two speed and variable speed is about $300 for a 410 system. I just can't see going for the two speed. 
Uh, yeah, I agree. And I'm going to translate this to, to terminology that I'm most familiar with is like, so two speed, he's two, so two stage equipment and the variable speed would be variable capacity equipment. Sometimes there's an interlay of, of, of terminology and it's perfectly fine. But uh, so for two speed or two stage equipment and variable speed is about $300 difference between, for, for a four ton. I do exactly what Kevin was going to do is go for a variable capacity system. Um, the comfort you'll receive so it'll provide better comfort control within the house better you know you can have better airflow um uh, one it's it's going to be it's going to operate quieter um and so if you're looking at the decibel reading of a variable capacity system versus a two-stage system uh the decibel reading can it can fluctuate depending on the, the the brand uh you can see as low as 54 decibels versus a two-stage system which the the lowest that i've seen is around it's going to be around 65 uh on uh, the decibel reading between you can see up to about a 10, 10 decibel difference. And, uh, uh, for those, for those audio nerds, 10 decibels, huge difference. So for every six decibels, that's, you're cutting the noise in half. And so if I'm talking at, uh, if I'm talking at, let's say 72 decibels and I drop it down, gosh, down to, uh, 66 decibels, six decibel drop, then I'm talking at half the volume that I was previously. And so to have that big difference between 60, you know, we'll say 65 down to, to in, the, in the mid 50s is gonna be a huge difference. And so with the $300 difference, I'd do the same thing that Kevin's gonna do. Cool. The next comment comes from M. Bram 635. It says, I consider reliability and longevity higher than price. Uh, why buy a system if it's not reliable and it won't last a long time? I agree. I don't want to buy a system that's not reliable and won't last a, time, last a long time. Reliability and longevity, at the end of the day, uh, the, the value that you get out of that unit is going to matter more than the price you pay. You get what you pay for. Um, and so um, I like to consider uh, use uh, an equation for how much that system actually costs. So let's say you have a system that's, we're going to use, we're use 20 grand, for example, because uh, easy math. So you have a you have a twenty twenty grand a twenty grand system that system let's say that last system lasts you know ten years gosh you divide that by you divide that by each year that system costs them two thousand dollars a year to have that system now let's say that same system lasted twenty years the system lasts a long time the cost that they paid up front was exactly the same but the 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 use the value use that they got out of that system uh, effectively dropped from two thousand dollars a year down to a thousand dollars a year and so the use that they get out of a system is super important and so i i agree reliability and longevity is is always in my opinion is always going to matter more than than the price of the system and so uh and that might dictate which system you go with. And so, um, like we've talked about before, variable capacity systems require a little bit more maintenance, a little bit more um, upkeep. Um, uh, and the trade-off is better utilities and better comfort level, but um, it can result in, in bigger repairs. And so if you divide that by, you know, how long did I get to use this system divided by how much I paid for this system over time, that's going to be a big deciding factor. Um, and that's that may help influence your, your purchases in the future. And so, yeah, great comment. like that one a lot. Next question, Fly Hoovers says, a little confused. When you say variable speed, is it always an inverter HVAC? I just received a quote in Florida and options they were giving me was a carrier performance two stage, comfort carrier single stage with variable airflow and carrier comfort single stage, uh, which is what I currently have. Um, they apparently do not offer inverters yet. I'm liking the positive things you're saying about the BC, but guessing that it's different in the comfort single stage with variable airflow I am being offered. Okay, so this is a huge, <laughs> this is a conversation I have with people all the time. So in the world of HVAC, you'll hear terms like variable speed, uh, variable capacity, uh, two speed, two stage, which is kind of goes back to the question before. Um, so, this, which is one of the reasons why I like to use the term variable capacity or two state or two stage capacity versus two speed and, and variable speed. I use speed whenever I'm communicating about like a variable speed blower motor, uh, which would be your airflow, which would have to do with your airflow inside. So to kind of break it down, your the quotes that you've received uh, was giving me carrier performance two stage, so they have a two stage capacity, so that's a two stage system, and then the carrier single stage with a variable airflow. So that is that has to do with a variable speed blower. So that is that that only has to do with the airflow that's being pushed out. It's a variable speed blower, and we can dive into different blower types. Essentially, they operate in a very similar way um, that a, your two staging your variable capacity do is that they, they ramp up depending on demand uh, or, or what, the, uh, what the system is designed to operate at. So you have a single stage system, variable airflow, 
What's nice about that one is that you can, if you have a thermostat that you can set for continuous airflow, uh, where you can just have it always circulate, it'll circulate on a lower speed and it will effectively run at a lower energy cost to, to run. And so variable airflow, so variable speed airflow system, um, that is not a variable capacity system. Uh, and so a variable capacity, so how much capacity does this air conditioner have uh, versus a the variable airflow. So air, that just has to do with the speed of the airflow and, and how it can ramp up and down. But it is not, it would not be considered an inverter. And so, but to to go back and answer your your. I guess your your first question you asked whenever you said a little confused when you say variable speed, is it always an inverter or HVAC? So whenever I say a variable capacity, and if I use the term variable speed, um, uh, I'm always referring to uh, an inverter. It'll be an inverter um, compressor in the HVAC system. And so, uh, but sometimes communication and trying to communicate that to homeowners, it depends on company, company to company and, and what terminology they use. And so that's one of the hardest conversations I have with someone. Like, they'll ask me, now, is, you said variable speed blower motor, but is it a, it's not a variable capacity system, is it? I'm like, no, it's a, it's a two-stage system with, with a furnace that has a variable speed blower motor inside. And that's, I, I deal with that on daily day. On the daily. So, anyways, great question. Next person, his name's Kendra Velt, 2005. When that fancy inverter control board fails, all your savings go up in smoke. That could be true if you one didn't register the equipment so if it didn't have a parts warranty and if you didn't if you didn't purchase a 10 year like a 10 year labor warranty within Oklahoma we know that standard labor warranty are, are required to have 1 year so like your your HVAC contractor is required to provide 1 year labor warranty at minimum now a company that offers an extended warranty um, like ours would you know for, to do it out over 10 years if that inverter control board fails within that 10 year time frame um, you're not going to be out the cost of paying for that board to fix the only the only thing that you're paying for is the inconvenience that it broke down and so uh, but but you've purchased the convenience of basically us coming out and, and fixing it for free. And so, but yeah, if you didn't do those things, your savings can, can go up in smoke. But if the only reason you're buying a variable capacity system is for the savings, I don't know. I don't recommend doing that. It, the savings is nice, but um, the comfort level is what I talk about a lot. So last question comes from Budgeman83030. says, if I was building a new house, I would go with a variable speed AC system, but I live in the house I was raised in, and it's over 59 years old. So I would, re I would just reinvest into single stage units. If ductwork is accessible, I would make sure you're also looking at airflow. Don't just look at the equipment, because even if you went back with single stage equipment, um, if you do have access to ductwork, make sure it is sized correctly for the for that single stage unit, even if you went back with that unit. Because what we're finding in homes, we're having to correct uh, return air, so the, the intake about 80% of the time uh, because they're undersized, even for just a single, even with, for a single stage system. And that can result in premature wear and tear uh, on blower motors and premature pre premature wear and tear on the system itself. Because if it's not able to breathe, it's gonna have a hard time operating. I would highly recommend, even if you're going back with a single stage system, I would highly recommend looking into the airflow and making sure that it's sized appropriately for those units. Um, and so, and I wouldn't necessarily count variable capacity systems out um, on on a home that is older, because a lot of times homes that are older where, you're, where you do have access to the ductwork and, and you can make some necessary changes, you will you will see the biggest change in, in utility savings versus a newer home that was built going from a single stage to a, um, a variable capacity. And so uh, it's all it's all relative what, to what's there now. So if the ductwork's in terrible shape, then um, re getting the ductwork updated, uh, increased, uh, replaced, whatever needs to be done, um, can make a huge difference in in your utility bill and your comfort level within the house. And so, um, especially on a house that's fifty nine years old. And so, I would highly, I'd highly recommend looking into the looking into the ductwork uh, and making sure that it's sized appropriately for that system, and, and making sure that you've got airflow to every room. So, because at the end of the day, I want you to be comfortable. That concludes all the questions for today. We will answer more at a later time. All right, that's a wrap. Yeah. <laughs> that's fun. Yarbrough.